Good afternoon, everybody. It is exactly 3 o'clock, and we are going to get started because we have got such a jam-packed afternoon here for you. We have a quick, snappy, high-energy service dialogue, followed immediately by our Friday afternoon keynote speaker. So we've got great time to spend here together, and I am so excited to be able to do this with you. So I'm Susan Danish, AJLI's Executive Director. Welcome to the Service Dialogue. This is our opportunity as the staff to have time to talk with all of you. And it's called a service dialogue for those of you who are new to annual conference because you expect services from us to help you in your fulfillment of the Junior League mission. And so it's a service dialogue just like this morning was a governance dialogue because that's about the board's work. I love our theme for the conference this year, Disrupt Convention. And I've really been thinking about it so much as I've thought about this conference and about what's going on in the world and how, what's going on with all of us, how we're disrupting convention individually, how things are disrupting convention. And so it made me think about this, and you may have seen this before, but when I think about the magnitude of, of disruption, well, this is disruptive. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so having a little AV is a disruptive thing. And not conventional for me, I might add. I'm good at PowerPoint. So anyway, this is disruptive. When you think about it, the world's largest taxi company owns no cars. The world's largest media company doesn't create content. The world's largest retailer doesn't have a warehouse with inventory. And the largest accommodation company does not own properties. Something's going on. Something is changing. And it's changing so rapidly when I think about it, these businesses, the largest in the world, are newbies. Uber was founded in 2009, and Airbnb in 2008. And look at where they are. So we are changing, and the way we interact with things is changing. And I think about then us as the Junior League, and I think about us changing, keeping up with change, and keeping fresh, and doing what we need to do to be relevant and to thrive for another 116 years, and I think, wow, that's going to be exciting. So I think about our plans for the year, and I've thought about how do we, as AJLI Disrupt Convention, what can we do as your staff team to make sure that we are doing more, and we're doing it better, and we're doing it as fast as we possibly, possibly can? And so our plan for the coming year has three priorities, and they're really critical. The first priority is to accelerate the transformation rollouts. We know, because we know what your members need and want to be satisfied members, that they want meaningful community work, that they want a well-run league, and they want a flexible member experience. And that's what the rollouts are all about. So what can we do to really focus on those? And there's a couple of things that we're doing. We're going to streamline the whole process. As you know now, it's an eight to nine month to a year or, or more process. So what can we do to streamline those things to make them even easier and quicker for you to do things? And the other thing that we're going to do is bring extra help in to make sure that you've got all the consulting advice that you need. So we're bringing in volunteer service providers. These are junior league members who are going to be specially trained at working with you on the elements of the transformation rollout. And so you'll get much more one-on-one, -on -one, in-depth consultation. Not that we're not doing a lot of that now, because we are, but there'll be more of them to work with more of you at the same time. Increase brand awareness. Boy, how important is that? Critical. And I firmly believe that it is our obligation as the association to create those big, broad reach, big media hits that help all of us. We have to do that. We must do, have to do that. We must do that. And in order to do that, we need to put some money into it this coming year 
so that we can really bring in the right firms, PR firms, media relations firms, and that they can put the plans together and begin to put the plan in motion. So we want to put some extra effort into that this year. And that goes along with our new brand um, identity standards and all of the other things that we're doing internally. And then finally, we want to fulfill our commitment to diversity and inclusion. And boy, if you weren't thinking about it as much before lunch today, I can, as I can assume that everyone feels even more personally committed to our efforts to be the most diverse and inclusive organization that we can be. And so we're going to do that. We've started to do that with our brand new resource, the updated building blocks, diversity and inclusion by design. And as I mentioned during the governance dialogue this morning, there's a premier copy of it available now from the Resource Center on the AJLI website. And so you can take a look at that and you can give us feedback about what we need to do more and differently. And we're going to follow up on that great suggestion today to have an advisory council made up of junior league members. And so we're going to do that as well. And one of our volunteer service providers is going to be totally dedicated to diversity and inclusion efforts. So there will be expertise, 20, well, not 24-7, but you know. <laughs> during work hours, there will be expertise available to all of you so that you have somebody there all the time. And then, of course, you heard about the, brand's, uh, the board's commitment earlier today. So we're doing things to really, really focus on these three things. I could talk about these on and on, but I do want to take a moment to stay with convention and share a little bit of the budget for the coming year with all of you. And so I'm going to turn things over to Aditi Deeg, who is our Director of Finance and Administration, and she's going to take you through the high points of the budget. Thank you, Susan. Good afternoon, everyone. I'll be spending a few minutes giving you highlights of the 2017-18 draft budget, as Susan just mentioned. I'll talk about the operating and capital budget and offer you my perspective of the investment or deficit budget planned for next fiscal year. You received a copy of the draft service plan and dra budget in your call to conference materials. I hope you've had a chance to read them. My time with you today is brief, so I'm not gonna go through every detail, but we'll take a few questions at the end. Additionally, Renee Tusi, AJLI Treasurer, and I are available throughout the conference if you have any additional questions about the budget. Just to quickly remind you of AJLI's budgeting process, the staff shows a draft budget to the Finance Committee in January and February. Any changes required are made and is shown to the full board at the March board meeting. That draft is presented in the call to conference materials. After annual conference, any further adjustments, if warranted, are made and is given to the board at the June board meeting for final approval. In March, the staff actually presented a break-even budget to the board. Though through thoughtful conversation, it was determined that the draft budget you see uh, the, with the planned deficit was warranted. To reiterate um, AJLI President Carol Scott's words, the AJLI Board of Directors fully supports this spending to accelerate the work in three specific areas, advancing the progress in transformation rollouts, increasing the Junior League brand internally and externally, and supporting the leagues in their diversity and inclusion work. Before we get into the numbers, I want to remind you that AJLI delivered a break-even or surplus budget for the last three years. Last year, we achieved a surplus of $81,705 and are on track to do the same this year. Going to the numbers on the slide, total revenues of $7.6 million are projected to be essentially the same as last year. This includes an emphasis on diversifying our fund development and other revenue streams, and also increasing conference registration fees. Expenses are budgeted to be 7.7 .7 million, an increase of 3.4% compared to last year. 
In a moment, I will give you more details on the allocation of the additional expenses compared to last year. We budgeted a decrease in depreciation of approximately 4.1% due to having less fixed assets when AJLI headquarters had a relocation to a new office. Giving a bottom line of a $238,205 deficit. Here we want to provide you additional details on the allocation of investment funds leading to the deficit budget. We are allocating $150,000 in marketing to our typical budget work. These funds will be used to hire a new PR and media firm to generate greater external awareness of the Junior League brand. $80,000 is being allocated to board development and board league relations as the board shows their continued commitment to support the leagues on your diversity and inclusion work. Additionally, this also includes the board's board committing to conduct 50 league visits in the upcoming year in support of your diversity and inclusion work. Finally, we have allocated $20,000 to build resources and tools that will help the leagues create tactical plans for their diversity and inclusion work. As a summary, these three priorities tie perfectly well into our broader strategic plan. I want to assure you that the board and staff carefully looked at AJLI's financial position prior to committing to this deficit budget. As of April 30th, AJLI has a very strong balance sheet with 6.9 million in assets, of which 88% are unrestricted, providing ample liquidity. Our liabilities are 558,000, with most of them being current liabilities. Finally, we have approximately 10 to 12 months of reserves. Even after the deficit spending, we'll have nine to 10 months of reserves. As a reminder, nonprofit best practices suggest you should have six to 12 months of reserves. We wanted to give you comfort that the AJLI board is focused on preserving this strong balance sheet while accelerating and delivering significant value to the junior leagues. Moving on to the capital budget, we continue to invest money in the One Network project, as well as other technology initiatives that will provide services to the junior leagues. The highlights of the 2017-18 technology work are to focus on building out phase two and three of the league program database. This database will be a rich repository of information about the community projects that the leagues conduct and the programs that drive them. This data will not only enable leagues to find new ideas, but also to share and learn best practices for specific programs in your league. We did a soft launch of the program database focusing on food security, human trafficking, teen girls, and literacy. Now it's time for everyone to put their information in, no matter what area you're working on. I highly encourage you to enter your information and project information and keep it updated if you already aren't doing so. Without your information, this will not be a good tool for your, for your leagues. Coming this fall, we will also launch a new billing and transfer management system. This should significantly streamline your AJLI dues billing by allowing you to process the, uh, manage the process online. In conjunction with the billing in 2018, one of my personal favorites, we will give you the option to pay your dues using ACH wire payments instead of paper checks. We will still, of course, accept paper checks. <laughs> <laughs> or cash. Yes. <laughs> we continue to make enhancements to the AJLI public-facing website and we'll start working on the member experience website, which should give you a curated custom feed. Finally, we will identify and install a learning management system that will integrate with the existing AJLI databases, providing, providing members with easier access to AJLI's learning resources. As you know, further information on all these technology initiatives are available on AJLI's website. 
They're also available on the service dialog handout that is available on your app, and Susan will mention a little bit about that in a minute. I know I did not cover a lot, so I want to take time now to answer any burning questions you may have about the budget. I have some questions, no. Um, I, I just wanted to add one thing um, just for everyone's clarification or information on the investment spending. And that is that this is still very much in the thought and um, the thought process of how, you know, what exactly we're going to spend the money on and how much, and you see the general allocations, but how much where. And I want to assure you that before we spend a dime, we're going to have spe a specific plan with specific objectives, um, targeted outcomes that we then monitor and measure and report on. So I wanted to give you that comfort that, you know, we're not just going out and spending a lot of money and see what happens. We're going to have in mind what we want to happen as a result, and then we'll monitor and, and report on what does happen. And um, the other thing is, I wanted to be clear that this is not like a new level of spending, annual spending, that we expect to continue each year. It's one-time investment spending, and then we expect to revert back to the normalized level of expenses that we've been seeing. And as you saw on the expense budget there, absent that $250,000 investment, in expenses would have increased only $3,000 year over year. So we're expecting to go back to um, you know, the, the other process. So I wanted to give you that comfort. Thank you, Renee. Anybody else have any questions? Hi, just one quick question. If I missed it, I apologize. But you mentioned the conference fees will be increased. Do you know what those numbers will be so that we can budget for them? Sure. So the, in the draft right now, we are uh, increasing all conferences by $50. website and see next year's conferences ah. okay. so the prices on the website are the prices any other questions okay no Hi there, thank you so much for all this great information. We really appreciate seeing it up on the screens and having this conversation. But I think seeing all this forecasting and these um, great numbers brings the question up in my mind of the actual spending for the past year. And I wonder if we could get budget to actuals as well. I'm sorry, what did she say? She wants budget to actuals. Oh. Yeah. So um, the, go ahead Renee if you want to answer that. <laughs> um, year to date, we are better than budget. Um, and if you look on the, there's a quarterly all league email that reports on actuals versus budget each quarter. And we are committed to our, our target is to have that out 45 days after each quarter end. And I believe that we've been within 30 to 35 days after each quarter end. So there's a specific balance sheet and an income statement with variance explanations actuals to budget um, each quarter. But last year, I think the budget was like an $11,000 surplus and we generated $81,000 surplus. So we finished the, so if you were looking at it actual, that would be what it showed. Sure, so, and then Michelle just told me that we can push out that information on the app on actual, so you'll have it available. No, nothing else? Okay. Thank you. So now we get to what we're going to do differently today, and that is, I hope, have a real conversation. Because we've been thinking so hard, as I said at the beginning, about what we're going to do next year and what we want to do farther out into the future. And so we wanted to share a few questions with you that we keep bouncing around among our team at headquarters. 
and get your thoughts and ideas about what we could do. And so you saw these questions. You may have seen them in an all league email that went out before the conference. But if you didn't, these are the questions that we'd like to talk with you about today. What could we do differently? And we means leagues, staff, even the board. What could all of us do differently to be a more diverse and inclusive organization? What could we do differently to further enhance the external and internal awareness of the Junior League brand? And what if, what if members were members, not provisionals, actives, and sustainers? So when we look at the diverse, diversity question, we've already talked about the things that we're going to, that we already have in our plan for next year. We have the new resource. We're going to continue to build out other resources around it. We have a volunteer service provider dedicated. We're going to put the council in place. So there's things that we're doing. In terms of brand awareness, we've also shared some of that. We're going to put more money behind it. Um, our awareness right now is about 50% versus the Girl Scouts at about 99%. We're actually getting updated awareness numbers as well, so that number may change a little bit, and you'll have it as soon as we have it. So what more do we need to do? And if members were members, now that's an interesting question. Why would we even ask that question? Because we know about our members, and this is part of the transformation rollout, which really is all about members. Community impact and governance and management and the membership model are all about members. And so we have active members that are busy and don't have as much time as they might in any one given year. We have sustainers that would love to be able to do more, but that's not the way the league works. That not, that's not the way a lot of leagues work, especially newer sustainers who say that they would love to be more involved in community work or they'd actually really like to work on the fundraisers. And, in, and sometimes that's not possible. And so what we've done as junior leagues is try to adjust to these needs of our members by creating more categories. So we have active gold and sustainer platinum and all of those different kinds of things. There are literally 65 different things, 65 different names that leagues have created in order to try to create that flexibility in the leagues. So is there a different way to think about it? I don't know. But these are the questions that we'd love to pose to you today. Now, to do that with three questions, what we've done is actually have a different question at the various tables. So this group here has the diversity and inclusion question. And this group has brand. And so, and so you have your question. Lucky you. They're all good questions. And so we'd love for you to talk a little bit amongst yourselves about these questions. We have a worksheet there that's got some lines on it. And so if one of you could scribe and capture your ideas, that would be great. We know we won't be able to hear from everybody during this session. And we'd love to collect the ideas and share them back out with you. So this is a time to really think about the possibilities. Think about what if and what could we do differently. If we were just starting out and trying to get people from here to there, would we start a taxi company or would we start Uber? So let's take about, oh, let's see, 10 minutes to talk at your tables, and then we'll share some information and see what we've got, OK? Thank you.
Okay. All right, everybody. Let's hear about what we can do differently. Let's start with diversity and inclusion. Let's start with diversity and inclusion. Who would like to share with everybody your ideas for what we can do differently? We have microphones around the room. So who's going to go first? All righty. I always like to make an entrance. Sorry about that. That's My okay. <laughs> I tripped a little this morning. <laughs> Good company. I'm Janie Nadolsky. I'm from the Junior League of Ogden, and we were working on diversity and inclusion before I fell over my purse. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I have learned throughout my years, uh, I work in college athletics where this is a very hot topic, and one of the things that I have learned that when we talk about diversity and inclusion, um, I think everybody has a very great idea of what that means, and a lot of times it does focus on skin color or nationality or whatever. But I always take a look at from the perspective of LGBTQ. And what I've learned in that sense is you have to say the words for them to understand that you are welcome here. Le we were talking at our table, lesbian, believe it or not, is not a dirty word. And it's okay to say that. And I think a lot of times people get very, very uncomfortable talking about that. But that is an important thing because what we do know about LGBTQIA is that they don't necessarily see when you say diversity and inclusion that you are talking to them as well. And so that's one thing we've done at the Junior League of Ogden. We've also made an effort to make sure that we are providing that education to our members about not necessarily whether you agree with it, whether you consider it a lifestyle or whether you consider it part of who this person is. There are issues that surround this group, this population within our communities that we need to be aware of and advocate for. So that's what we talked about. Great. Let's hear it. So I already have one thing I need to go and look in our new yeah. diversity and inclusion by design book to see if we said. Okay. Somebody else on diversity and inclusion? Right here. Oh, yay, yay. Hi, I'm Missy Zainchuk from the Junior League of Tacoma. And going off of that point, uh, we'd like to see a little bit more information about things other than and race and ethnicity, um, things such as age and the difference in age, as well as socioeconomic status. And additionally, um, Tacoma has always been an early adopter of pretty much every rollout that comes along. Yay! And we would really love to see a diversity and inclusion rollout. I think that um, this is a really hard topic to discuss and dive into, and having a little bit more support as we walk through this journey, I think would be advantageous and very helpful, because I think that also, additionally, every different community looks a little bit different um, in how they're made up. Thank you so much. And you know what? When I was telling you about the things that we're doing, I left something out. On our website, we have the learning portal, and there are six different concentrations there. So we're adding a seventh concentration, which is diversity and inclusion. Okay. And we will have a diversity and inclusion track at ODIs starting with the third ODI next year. Thank you. Thank you. Let's take another. Yes. Hey, Jessica Sharp from the Greenville South Carolina League. I told them I feel like all I do is talk about diversity. Um, so I'm going to kind of piggyback on what somebody over here said and then talk about what we talked about. So um, I don't like this. Um, so we had a conversation about this idea of diversity is more than race um, and that it, it includes um, socioeconomic status and age. Um, and um, a colleague at the table pushed back on that and essentially we had a conversation around the fact that yes, diversity is broad, it means a lot of things, but if we're being honest and we're asking ourselves a tough question, we are not doing a good job around race and that probably needs to be where we start. So all of those things are important, but we need to be really serious about a conversation around race. So that's what we talked about. But also, um, as just kind of some strategies, um, we need to expand our recruitment pipelines and, and be more inclusive and intentional in recruitment. 
We need to educate our members and partner with other organizations in the community. Um, find out what our members need in order to feel included. And last, diversifying our leadership pipelines. I told a really quick story. When I was a senior in college, I was the president of my sorority, and we had way more people of color join that year than any other year that I had been involved. And so when folks look like me and they're in leadership, it makes me feel like I'm more welcome. Great, thank you so much. Amber, do you want to say anything about the new recruitment tools and how diversity is fitting into all of that? It's lonely up here. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Amber Levy, AGLI's Director of Membership. And um, I'm actually hosting a session tomorrow morning all about how recruitment is directly tied to retention. Um, but some of the uh, concepts that we'll review tomorrow tie directly to this conversation. Additionally, there's a recruitment toolkit that actually launches today. Um, so there are some resources in there to help you. Um, there's actually a uh, tips and tricks on how to recruit uh, and, and keep diversity in mind through your recruitment efforts. So please check that out. But again, we'll talk more in detail about this at my session tomorrow morning, so I hope you'll attend. Great, and I do think that if we're not getting it quite right, if there's more that we need to say or, or do differently, please let us know, right? Yeah, absolutely, we want your feedback. We'll, we will continually add to this toolkit. So the conversation that we have tomorrow morning and then hopefully ongoing will help direct us in terms of what we need to provide you with. Great, thank yep. you. Alicia. So I just, we were actually brand awareness, but we started to talk about diversity there at the end. And that is, I agree with whoever just spoke here, and is it Jenny? Janie, in that socioeconomic and age, that is a part of, of diversity and inclusion, but that's the easy conversation. LBGTQ and race are not, and those are the big deals that are obstacles and barriers in our community. Socioeconomic, I mean, it's important. We can talk about dues, fund development. Do you need to wear $3,000 worth of clothes, shoes, and bags, you know, to different things? But you talk about race and why our diversity in Cleveland is decreasing when, you know, we're one of the most segregated countries in America, we need to talk about race. We need to talk about LGBTQ and not just the diversity and inclusion and being afraid, because being afraid is not gonna help Cleveland. Great, thank you. And I'm not gonna ask for a show of hands, but if you think about your own league, have there been issues in your league because of lack of awareness and understanding that was driven by racial differences in your league. I can tell you that there have been lots of instances, and I'm not gonna name leagues, but there, there's so much work still to be done there when you think about how you really do become a diverse and inclusive organization from a racial standpoint. Okay, is there somebody, oh, okay. Hi. So uh, we were talking about, oh, I'm Kathleen from Junior League of Boston. Um, so we were kind of, we just attended the diversity and inclusion breakout session and we talked about the idea of not being a charitable but a justice organization. And, um, and we really kind of focused on that last question of what will this look like when we get there? And uh, when we start thinking about, you know, at Junior League of Boston, we, our focus is on the wellness of girls, and we serve, we call them our girls. And, you know, at the end of it, there's that idea, like, we pat ourselves on the back, like, we've been so good, we've, we've been so charitable, we've really made a difference. We're, we have to start looking at the girls that we serve, like our daughters. Nobody considers me charitable because I'm sending my daughters to an expensive summer camp. That's because they're my children and I'm obviously invested in them and I have to be equally invested in the girls in my community who are not my blood. And when we start looking at the people we serve as people who are us and part of our family, that changes where we come from and I think that that brings everything else in. That brings members in, it makes members feel like what they're doing is important it makes people want to join us. It people, makes people want to stay with us. So that's kind of the where, what it's going to look like when we get there part. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, one last, is there one last 
diversity and inclusion comment? Yes. Hi, I'm Lena from the o Junior League of Oakland East Bay. First of all, I'm available to come to any league to talk about LGBT issues, and because I'm Asian woman, and I'm an out lesbian, and I'm proud of that. Half the room knows this. And, you know, part of, part of it is visibility, and part of it is education. But it's also about having the conversation without having someone get defensive. And that is the hard conversation when you have a conversation about diversity and inclusion is, you know, people, their defenses get up the moment you talk about whatever it may be. And we need to have that conversation of, without feeling that we have to be defensive and protect ourselves and that what you're saying is wrong and I have a friend that's black or I have a friend that's lesbian, whatever. We need to have that conversation of how we have those difficult conversations and not make people in the room feel defensive and feel like we're attacking them. But I am available to come to any league to talk about this, okay? <laughs> That's great. Okay, we could talk about this forever, but let's move on to the internal and external brand awareness. Who wants to suggest something that we can do different and better for brand awareness? Rose Cooper, Junior League of Rochester. One of the things that I found very powerful in the discussion I just attended with Vicki Clark was the idea of talking about the Junior League not by the activities we engage in, but by what the Junior League produces. And what the Junior League produces is trained women leaders. And if we rally around our end result the production of trained women leaders, we have a consistent national message. The way we create trained women leaders is the activities we undertake, our volunteering programs, our advocacy work, um, amongst other things. So we should not be what we do, but what we produce. And then that, that is something that every junior league can talk about, but it also still gives individual leagues the opportunity to be entrepreneurial and undertake individual projects. That's a great insight, thank you. We will pass that, make sure that the PR firm, media firm really understands that because I actually believe that as well. Somebody else? Uh, Mary Myers, Junior League of Lubbock, Texas. We went in a similar direction as that. Um, brand awareness is a larger, it's a big thing. It's, it's much more than your logo or your whatever. It's what the general public knows about you. And right now, I think we have a number of, of probably runs the spectrum in our individual communities on that awareness factor. So you said we're about 50% related to, you know, as it opposed to the Girl Scouts at 99. And in our individual communities, that probably spans up and down all over the place from there. It does. I think that we could, from the AJLI down, create a very targeted, very intentional, mission-based, results and outcomes-driven brand awareness campaign about impact. And I think that a campaign like that that starts at AJLI could be then tailored and customized at the local level tied to your local impact. So Lubbock, Texas, who impacts 1,700 elementary children a week with weekend food supplement, was part of a larger hunger movement led by AJLI that impacted millions of children and families in a school year. It changes the story. It makes it about our mission. It makes it about outcomes. And it lets us all say a similar story, but with local tangible proof. And I think it changes the awareness on a global scale. Yes, I think you have the big umbrella and then to your point, I would love to see customizable materials because you have access to media in your local markets Correct. and a lot of you can get it for free. And yep. so if you can take the big umbrella conversation and make it local for you, I think that's great. We uh, possibly have volunteer, you know, an AJLI committee tasked, and it could be the brand committee, uh, tasked with the toolkit for how to take it and make it local. If you've not done that, it's not, intuitive necessarily, but it's not hard when you start to pick out the pieces of those stories that are, that are in line with our mission. We could teach each community how to tell that story. Great. 
We'll pass that along to the Brand Advisory Task Force. Thank you. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm at Lauren Roberts, Junior League of Birmingham. I just want to tag on to what she just said. I mean, looking at this, the Junior League, I think it shouldn't be AJLI um, marketing. It should be the Junior League, and then you can put in your zip code, and then it comes up of where's the one nearest where I live so that I can join or donate or support in some way. But I don't think it needs to be AJLI marketing. It just needs to be, like in your example, the Girl Scouts, not the Girl Scouts of North Central Alabama. It needs to be the Junior League. Absolutely. It is not about AJLI. OK. Hi. Um, I'm Kim from Junior League of Ogden. I guess we like microphones. <laughs> Um, so, I don't know if there's a specific request for AJLI or maybe someone in this room who would like this as a business project. Um, I would love for there to be more literature on the legacy of the league, whether it's like, um, there's a book, we're from Utah, there's a book on pioneer women in Utah that features excellent mini biographies. I'd love, I'd love to see something like that about um, women in the league. We obviously have an incredible history. Um, I'm personally a history major, so maybe I have an excessive bent in that direction, but I'd love to see more of that um, from the, the, the way far back to the not so far back and the, and the going forward. And I think that ties into um, talking about PR of what's happening now um, and really hanging our hat on those um, civil rights. I think if we can honor that past, it makes it a lot easier for us to frame our future and our values work. and and what our brand means in connecting those pieces together going forward. So I would love to see more of that. Thank you. I think that's a great idea. In fact, I know it's not about AJLI, but there's an opportunity in 2021, because that is the 100th anniversary of the association, to talk about what leagues have done together since they came together. And so I've been thinking also about what kind of book or piece that we could do to time to that. Now, that's not tomorrow. but. I think that there's also opportunity, because you've got me thinking too. There are so many areas where we've had tremendous impact that people don't know about. Uh, for example, this whole children's museum movement that we were part of just um, and honored for just recently. Nobody knows about all of the different things that junior leagues did to really literally create a different way for children to learn. And our early children's museums in the 1940s were often science museums. So we were teaching kids about STEM before STEM was STEM. And so putting some of those things together, looking for the common themes that tie a lot of leagues together, and I think really lifting up those stories would be really helpful too. What do you think? Yes? OK. All right. Hi, Melissa Ostrasser, Junior League of Toronto. Uh, so my ask would be um, that you take back to the marketing group that we look at this as a global brand, as an international brand. And when we're thinking of, you know, will this idea work? We need to think, will it work in Canada? Will it work in the UK? And will it work in Mexico as well? So that would be my ask. Thank you. Thank you. OK, one more. My name is Tina Pasquale, and I am the president of the Junior League of Kingsport. And um, we looked at this separately, external and internal. And um, internally, we thought, um, and this could apply externally to perhaps update the mission statement. So as um, several people have already said, that we're focusing on trained women leaders through volunteerism, but make it much shorter, just really a lot easier, the elevator speech idea. OK. Um, and externally, we thought that um, if we, if um, Junior League could become the place where everybody identifies with women's issues, and we were a little concerned about going broad women's issues or issues that impact women's lives, um, if we could own, own that somehow, we can address the women's issues in our own communities. But if we have this broad, you know, women's issues, when people have a thought in their community, if, even if they don't know um, uh, any, anybody who is in Junior League or if they want to be a member of Junior League, they say it's a woman, women's issue, there's a pay gap. Um, who, who would I talk to about this? They maybe be in touch with the Junior League. Absolutely. So, Thank you. Uh -huh. 
Great. Okay, we're going to have just a little bit of time to do membership. Is anybody dying to share a membership observation? No? <laughs> Was it a question you just hated? All right. Do we have anybody? One? One comment? <laughs> Hi, Pilar Lopez from Palm Springs. Um, we talked about it, and as a provisional also, um, this our, our take was that it's good to keep those three stages. Maybe make it a little bit more, um, sustainers can do a little bit more of active roles, provisionals can do a little bit more active roles, but keep those names. That was our take at, oh, our take at least. Okay. And is that the sentiment of the room? Okay. <laughs> no, okay, one I'm gonna, more. I'm going to add to what she said, Julie Broussard, Lafayette. So our sustainers, they, we actually have sustainer liaisons for all committees. So they work with each committee chair. Everybody has a sustaining advisor to keep them engaged. So being a sustainer is such a great point to be, but we, we engage them. Our sustainer liaison group is a sustainer active member as co-chairs and active in a sustainer on the committee for those sustainers. So we keep them involved. And our provisional liaison is such a big committee. This year we have 70 new candidates, which will be provisional this fall. And it's such an excitement for those provisionals to do their year and learn about the league and have that day at their annual meeting to present and to do their skit and excitement to become active. So. I, I really think the staging is great. It's how you utilize them is really, it's not a label. It's not a label. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna wrap up now and, oh, I'm sorry, one more. Um, hi, Mary Ann McIntosh from Olympia. And our table, we would like to get rid of the categories, well, mainly active and sustainer. We like new member, and just member. We feel that by putting them in buckets, you are, in a sense, making them where just you're adding that label, you're adding those requirements, and you're just, we have, like you said, 65 different labels of a sustainer or, you know, platinum, whatever people have. And as a person who's been active and sustainer and now back active, I found it was just there were so many like pulling you one way to the other and when I was a sustainer I felt like I was shoved in a box and that just attending wasn't, I didn't have the same pizzazz attending a general membership meeting as I did when I was active and I feel like if we still have your foundation amount of committee uh, or members when you're doing your placement you have all the roles that you need and if you send it all out to everybody to sign up you'll probably get more than you needed and then that gives you more people to then place other, pla uh, other places. And then you don't have to say, I'm just a sustainer mentor. You're part of the team. Great, so. thank you. So I guess we still have two sides on this, right? And we won't resolve it today, unfortunately. But thank you so much. Oh, I'm sorry. One more. OK, one more. this sorry. is the very last okay. one because we're going to, we, ha we, have, a, really we have such an honor. Okay, it'll be real quick. So I'm Ann from the Junior League of Birmingham, Michigan, and Carol was walking around and asked us a really good question about this and asked what would you need or what would AJLI need to do to get this to work? So we discussed that we would, at the very basic, have to have a mindset and organizational shift. We would not only have to revamp our fee structure, both at a league level as well as AJLI. So that's a one of the big concerns. And then also, we did talk about that the categories, when we were asked whether they help or hold back women, there's two sides to that, right? That a lot of our ladies like to reach these benchmarks and have these goals to meet when you're looking at going sustainer, it's such an honor, or when you become active, um, like the woman over there mentioned. So there are a lot of different levels that I think we have to have a full transition to get to this mindset. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, this is gonna to be to be continued. We have a lot more topics to cover and a lot more ground to cover in all of this. So, 
it is now time for me to say the service dialogue is over. You are going to get a push notification from the app, on the app, that will give you a handout about all the things we couldn't talk with you about today because we talked with each other. And it started out being like a little one-page flyer, and then everybody kept saying, well, we want to share this, and we want to share that, and we want to share this, and we want to share that. So you're getting a great big long thing in your app. So definitely take a moment to look at it, to go through it, to send your members to the ODI coming up, to take a look at your turnover administration list, which I think you have a copy of on your table, and to fill in your community impact information on the profile. Those are just three. And so now, thank you so, so much for really some tremendous input and feedback for us. And now I'm going to turn things over to Ann Townsend, who will introduce our amazing keynote speaker.